Mrs. Eckhoff, Mrs. Eastgate, members of the faculty, and students. Welcome to the 2017 National Honor Society Fall Induction Ceremony. We are gathered here to formally recognize those students who have been selected by the faculty of our school for successfully com completing their candidacy and are being inducted as new members of our NHS chapter. For current members and those former members who may be among our guests, we hope this will serve to remind you of the standards of excellence you are maintaining as members of the nation's oldest, largest, and most prestigious student recognition program. Our chapter is proud to be inducting new members with today's ceremony and indicates the continuing emphasis on excellence that we represent for our school and community. Throughout the year, members of our chapter serve as role models for other students. In addition to the strong academic records they that established our eligibility for membership. Our chapter members are leaders in the student organizations, and we serve our school and community through many activities, including 15 hours of community service per, semester, per member per semester. We are proud of our record of accomplishment and welcome these new members to bring new energy and support of our continuing work as NHS members. It is at this time that we proclaim to all in attendance that the membership in Tippecanoe Valley National Honor Society has been earned by these candidates through the effective demonstration of the four qualities that serve as standards for the society. Members of the chapter will now review these qualities for the candidates. We begin with scholarship. benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended, for human education only ends at the end of life. Knowledge is one great element in life, which leads to the highest success, and it can be acquired in only one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past, the torch guiding us to understand the present, and the light that illuminates the future. Candidates have the charge to continually expand their world through, through the opportunities inherent in scholarship. L. Frank Baum once said, No thief, however skillful, can rob one of knowledge, and that is why knowledge is the best and the most treasure to acquire. Next is service. My office is service. Service can be established in the routine of the day's work where many opportunities arise to help others both at school and in the community. A willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or public recognition is the quality we seek in our membership and promote for the entire student body. We are committed to volunteering our time and talents to the creation for a better tomorrow. Martin Luther King once said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Now for leadership. Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school in taking initiative in the classroom and in school activities. The real leader strives to train and aid others to reach their common goals of success. The price of leadership is sacrifice, the willingness to yield one's personal interest for the interests of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power or and resources may exist in a school, community, or nation, they are ineffectual without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed. Thus, to lead is a meaningful and substantive charge to each of our members. Alexander the Great once said, I do not fear an army of sheep, I do not fear an army of lions led by a sheep, but I do fear an army of sheep led by a lion. Next is character. Our goodness. It is that without which no one can respect oneself, nor hope to 
to obtain the respect of others. It is this force of character that guides one through life, and once developed, grows steadily with it. Character is cheap and not received. It is the product of constant thought and action, the daily striving to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must be in reality what we wish to appear to others, to be rather than to seem. By demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, we may hope to prove by example that we value character. John Hayes Heyman once said, character is the real foundation of all worthwhile success. Thank you. At this time, will the new inductees please rise and take their places. As officers, we help light the candles of our fellow members, so that we may all light the way to a brighter community. <coughs> Fellow members and new inductees, please raise your right hand and repeat the pledge, which is located on the back of your program. I pledge to uphold, I pledge to uphold the high purposes of the National Honor Society, the high purposes of the National Honor Society to which I have been selected. To which I have been selected. I will be true to the principles for which it stands. I will be true to the principles for which it stands. And will maintain and encourage. High standards, the high standards of scholarship, service, leadership, and character. Of scholarship, service, leadership, and character. Thank you. Will all the inductees please make their way onto the stage? <coughs> Please welcome our advisors, Mrs. Eastgate and Mrs. Eckhart. Thank you. And now, as your name is called, please step forward to receive your certificate of membership. Step out. Alyssa Brito. Chase Brower. Cody Craig. Bryce Kedney, Hannah Gibbons, Kelsey Justice, Gary Klinger, Susan Nickerson, Asia O'Connor, Michaela Sandbacken, Bradley Shepherd, Travis Shell, Enola Sloan, and Carissa Zeman. Please congratulate our new inductees with a round of applause.
good evening, and uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, first of all, I do want to thank, uh, let's give a round of applause to uh, Mrs. Eastgate and Mrs. Zetkoff for everything they do to make this happen. So. Um, you know, as a new person to the Valley community and Valley family, uh, as Mr. Hutton, I know, will back me up on this, usually these aren't the kids that you learn first, right? Uh, they're usually the kids that sometimes uh, are frequent flyers down to the office. But you know that you have a very special group of kids when I do know most of the people on this list because they are outstanding leaders, they have the top character, and they do the things in the school that put them up for a nomination or to already be members of National Honor Society. So it's a pleasure to see all these kids here tonight and see all the family members and, and, and just talk a little bit about them. Um, I know for some of you new inductees, we talked a little bit about what it means to be a member of National Honor Society and that it is a big deal. I know it's certainly one of my visions and the vision of Mrs. Eckhoff and Mrs. Eastgate that uh, being a member of National Honor Society takes on kind of a new meaning. Um, at uh, Tippecanoe Valley High School, and it, it, it certainly does to me. So I really want to congratulate all of you. This is, this is a huge honor, and it's, and it's a really big deal, and it's something that I really want to see grow and, and continue to really mean something to where um, I see some younger kids out there as when they you know, come to high school and become juniors and seniors, like, well, I really want to be a member of National Honor Society. Um, tonight, I guess, uh, I, I, I promised repeating that I would keep it short. Okay, I'm kind of talking about both. But uh, anyways, um, the biggest thing I want to focus on tonight, and, and for all of you, if there's, if there's any words of encouragement or advice I can give you, is, is find whatever it is that you're the most passionate about and, and, and find that and find a way to share that with everybody and with as many people as you can. For me, um, you know, it's obviously been education. It always was education, whether it's coaching or teaching and now as an administrator. But the biggest thing I can tell you is once you find whatever it is that you're passionate about, enthusiastic about, is to make sure that you are a servant leader. And there's no doubt the National Honor Society, as we learned, is very much about being servant leadership. And when you can become a servant leadership, you realize that it's not necessarily so much about what you, you're just sharing your passion and you're being a leader, okay? And you're gonna get far more joy by sharing what you're passionate about and being a leader and bringing other people towards your cause and helping them than you'll ever get promoting yourself. And that, that to me is what National Honor Society is all about. I'm really proud of all of you. Thank you, you members that are already here. You guys look great, you've done a great job and welcome to all the new members. Thank you very much. For our advisors, Mrs. Eckhoff and Mrs. Eastgate, and the officer team for their hard work in organizing this year's induction ceremony. Please join me in thanking them with a round of applause. Thank you for all attending our NHS induction ceremony. In just a moment, the new inductees will recess, after which you are all invited to join us in the cafeteria for a reception in their honor. But before doing so, please join me once again and applauding all of our new National Honor Society members. 